Okay, today's video is about um, what we're going to do about the um, laser engraver cutter. Um, first things first was um, the board broke. Um, the nano seems to work, the drivers seem to work, but it was this that basically gave out the blue puff of smoke and smelt. Well, once that gave it, it just got hot and you could smell it was burnt. Now, it seems like this bit there, which is the... Um, MOSFET I believe uh, got too hot and blue I've purchased a new one same design but different sort of circuit board there's this offending object there now it does when you actually turn the laser cutter on it's fine it's only when you start actually laser cutting that this warms up very quickly very hot uh, within three or four seconds this will be egg frying hot so you can't touch it um, which is a major problem I think the problem is these boards are really designed for three and a half watt or lesser lasers uh, but what they have done instead uh, you know with a 5.5 watt laser it takes a lot more heat or current going through there which then makes it get very hot my so my plan for doing that to keep it cool well it'd be nice if I could um, take off the board and put a bigger one there you know that can handle more current but um, I don't know much about MOSFETs or really I don't know anything at the moment so it'd be nice if I could transfer it into a bigger one but since I can't what I'm going to do instead is I've got these copper sheets from eBay I bought um, a kilo's worth and what they do is they sell it as mixed off cuts of copper um, I think from about 0.7 millimeter up to about 1.2 this is the thinnest that came in the pack uh, there was only about five sheets it's quite heavy really considering um, for the amount you get um, but the idea for this is I'm going to cut a piece about that size and then cut strips same length but obviously less high and solder them on so that at the end of the day I end up with a copper heat sink which will be say that long but that high and that wide and then that can go on top of there to dissipate the heat uh, like I say I'll put like three or four layers going sideways as well so it can dissipate the heat a bit better um, I could buy it but I thought if I make it a it's going to be cheap in the long run if I have a few to make and also you can't get the size you really want so it was if I purpose build it hopefully it will be better than um, buying ready-made things and cheaper right so once I get that there obviously because it's copper I've got to be a bit careful of the uh, contacts so I think I'm laying double-sided uh, adhesive tape there pushing that on that should keep the top down don't know how long for since it will get high temperatures um, I might do something with the back but obviously again there's little things that maybe might make contact I could do the same on the back to again dissipate the heat from there out this way um, and that's that so I've built a box the idea was to build a box put that in there I got this off thingiverse and I just ex made the height taller by making it bigger by sort of altering the scale of the, that axis uh, it is a rough box now it doesn't fit in actually because um, when these boxes are made we go out that way so you've got those and they go out the window um, all these are made different they're not not standard so when I get this all designed properly um, I will um, sort that out the idea, the idea was using fans as well as the heatsink put that say there so I've got a side fan and also oops where is it I had one earlier I also have you know a more directional fan maybe straight on top of the um, thing as well again this is just a temporary box so I can put things together even with a bit of sellotape just to get me going and then that could go there or there something like that <coughs> okay so that's what I'm going to do with the PCB to make that better I say if I knew if you I can't really buy a bigger one it seems you can't just buy one of these 
with a bigger thing if I do have to do something I will have to mod it myself with its own transistor or something right the other problem was the wobbliness of this uh, this isn't really good enough now I have a feeling that what they do is these are just the cheapest sort of bearings you can get on Amazon you know they're like 40 pH where these ones are actually about well I'm paying a couple quid for them if you sort of wait a bit longer you can get them for maybe a pound pound fifty from China but I wanted them quickly so because there's a bit of play there these aren't really big enough my thinking is these are slightly bigger I might be able to put them there and they might go through the hole uh, haven't done any checks yet but they might actually go through the hole and actually lift it up itself on its own so I might just have to replace that now if that don't work the next plan is I printed these off from Thingiverse as well and basically you would get that and that Oops, you get one of those, one of those stick them together somehow right, so that, that's basically like that again I think it's not exactly a good fit I need to calm, uh, sand some bits down maybe or use those bits in there and basically this bit then goes that fits in there and then you put another one on the other side and by adjusting that distance there uh, by adjusting that sort of thing the distance between the two you can bend them up or down to make better or worse contact so basically they work like that by adjusting the middle bit you can you can make them bend down so we've got to give that a try like I say otherwise I will try the um, other thing in there um, I've printed these off but I haven't actually uh, used them yet or I've lost them basically and that holds the things down so again that will be the next thing I do next I also printed off from Thingiverse these end covers I think they're 40 millimeters inside um, and they will just go on oh, they got to go on a certain way and then that can be used for that Oops, lift it up so by the time I'm finished I'll most probably move these motors around anyway and like maybe have that one coming out that way to, because the cables going that way that one up like that um, as well once that's all done the idea was to have a chain a back chain I think it's called a drag chain I mean to go from here to there but I printed it off and to be honest it all went wrong I think the whole plate it printed the first layer and at some stage the um, glass got knocked and the whole thing got offset so as you can see there it started printing that then I think it hit something and the whole glass plate actually moved and then started building it again so they haven't really gone together well and not only I think even if they did go together um, better it's still not a great fit I mean and I spent a lot of time trying to fix that so I've actually purchased some off eBay now um, you know the black proper stuff ready made seems to work I reckon it will work a lot better and be less likely to uh, faults going back to the board what I've also purchased at the same time is some of these so my power's coming in there 12 volts I'm going to connect into these terminals there onto here so basically I've got 12 volts there once I've done that uh, if we take one of the um, fans I've purchased um, a box of the females of these Oops. And I think they're called XH or HX or HS, I can't remember now. And I'll solder them onto there and then I can always push these in there so they're removable. So if they break later on I can always change it rather than just direct soldering them on. If you like the video please subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, if you have a comment leave a comment, if you have any advice leave advice. Thanks for this. I'll see you in the next video.